It's very, very grassroots. I mean, like people throw that word around grassroots, like, oh, it's, you know, um, but this really is because we as like, we're sort of working on promoting it and doing some projects and coordinating a few things, but we really have no involvement in anybody's event. <laughs> like I personally have no involvement. I don't say who gets to play or where they do with, do it or anything like that. People do their own thing. Um, they did a, a, a published study that looked at um, professional musicians and artists and they found something really interesting, which is that in the last few years, the number of professional musicians or proportion of professional musicians in the workforce has sort of almost halved. To me, that that rings true a bit because I know people who have actually gone, this is too hard, I'm not going to do this anymore. And meanwhile, so while, while the number of people who are playing professionally seems to have dropped quite a lot, the number of people who play music hasn't. So there's a different study that the same same organisation publishes. You know, the number of people in Australia who play music hasn't didn't drop after COVID. In fact, it went up, we think. You, you never know what seed is going to be planted in a musical event that inspires someone, motivates someone, lead, makes a connection that leads to something. You, you, you'd never know, and it, all these things... Um, you know, they often lead to other things and you might have a little concert in the street, you might be playing in the street or, um, or whatever and a kid sees you playing and they come home and go, I want to play, you know, or I've already played and now it makes sense now. You, you never know. So I think it's really important um, that we get out there and play and make music together and, yeah, this is just a day to, to highlight it and celebrate it and, and do it. going okay yeah okay <laughs> it's sounding better and better still a little delay but I, a little bit more manageable i think <laughs> um yeah apologies for some of the technical issues we've just gone through there alex but we do appreciate you taking the time to join us uh today and we are talking about make music day which is this friday as you're listening to this episode releasing on the Monday, so hopefully you don't dilly-dally too much before you tune in because you might have missed Make Music Day, but that is what we're, we're here to talk about and promote, and we're joined by Alex Masso, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, sure. Right. Great to be here. Wonderful. We're normally pretty poor with our pronunciation, so I'll take that as a win. <laughs> Thank you again for, for joining us today. Um, so, yeah, Make Music Day... Australia coming up this Friday, but it's also a bit of an international event as well, Alex. Can you, you tell us a little bit about how this day started? Yeah, so in 1982, which uh, coincidentally was the year I was born, um, so something, a couple of good things happened that year, I suppose. Um, <laughs> in France, <laughs> the culture minister at the time um, decided that it'd be great to have a day to celebrate music making um, and at the time in France, what they were mainly doing was having big free concerts in the street. Um, they put a lot of resources in and put a lot of effort in, and they sort of declared that this was the day we're all going to have a big party and have uh, musical celebrations everywhere. The government, you know, they said, let's do this. Um, and it sort of started there from that one idea. And it's, it's sort of evolved gradually over the years and it's become different things in different places. And it's sort of taken on a bit of a different um, sort of life of its own in the last 10 years or so. Um, I mean, you know, lots of different countries, at least 120 countries around the world, they're doing different things for Make Music Day. We sort of call it Make Music Day, but it's Fête de la Musique, which is the French um, name for it. It's the same thing, you know, it's 21st of June. The, the date was actually picked as it was the, it's the beginning of, um, summer, summer in Northern Hemisphere. So that's where it started. But really what we're doing is we're just linking up with people all around the world and people all over Australia and saying, let's make music. Let's, um, you know, talk about how great it is to get together and play music, um, you know, promote these things that are happening in all different places, music in all its forms. So it's not really genre specific. It's not about particular high profile artists or you know, anything like that. It's just about let's all get together and do what we can and, and um, you know, community groups and 
professionals and kids in schools and all kinds of people can, um, yeah, just get together and make music on that day. Beautiful. And and if you could explain the DIY music festival side of it in, in terms of obviously this isn't like, you know, just a an event happening somewhere. It's more of a day where everybody makes music, but it's described as a DIY music festival because, as you say, uh, it's open for anyone who wants to from any genre to take part. Yeah, and the spirit of it is really about people doing their own thing, but they're all connected in this you know, there's sort of a couple of basic things that connect all of it, which is the day is number one. And the other thing that's uh, part of Mac Music Day is that the events should be free to attend. So that's always been part of this day uh, is been promoting things that it's easy for people to go to because they're free to attend. Um, and other than that, people can do whatever they like. Like we have people, um, you know, booking, um, you know, community venues and putting on a concert. We have people playing in the street. Last year, there were people playing at the train station in Gunnedah. This year, there's some people playing ukuleles down at the Merriweather Ocean Baths. You know, there's all kinds of things happening all over the place, and it can be spontaneous. It could be a planned concert. Um, it could be anything, and it's really great to see people coming up with their own ideas and just doing it whatever they want to do. There, it's very, very grassroots. I mean, like people throw that word around grassroots, like oh, it's you know. Um, but this really is because we as like we're sort of working on promoting it and doing some projects and coordinating a few things, but we really have no involvement in anybody's event. <laughs> like I have personally have no involvement. I don't say who gets to play or where they do with, do it or anything like that. People do their own thing and we just celebrate it and promote it and talk about it and encourage people to get involved. Yeah, you're almost yeah, you're you're a promoter, but you're not an organizer or a creator of anything like that. And there is a list of gigs on the Make Music Day website um, and you can also submit your gigs there as well for, for the events that are happening this Friday. Um, but you, your job, that, as you described to me by email, is you manage the Australian Music Association and through that is how you got involved with Make Music Day, the, the campaign here in Australia. So... Can you, you tell us a little bit about your role there with the Australian Music Association as well and how it sort of naturally lends into the Make Music Day campaign? Yeah. So we are actually an industry association. So our members, we're a membership-based organisation and our members are um, wholesalers and retailers and other businesses that are involved in music products. So um, people who make instruments, import and sell instruments, music stores and pro audio, print music, all those things. Um, we have luthiers and repairers and all kinds of people like that who are associated with it, but mostly, you know, wholesalers and um, manufacturers and, and uh, retailers. And, you know, all of those businesses, like we're talking about tiny little um, local stores and then big global companies like Fender and Yamaha, Roland, Kawhi, like they're, they're our members and they're our, our board as well, made up of those people. And they're their common ground, like when you sit down with those people and you talk to them and, you know, what they care about and also what their, what their businesses need, you know, to be frank about it, is for people to play music. So there's this very nice um, um, synergy between that industry as an industry that employs a lot of people and, you know, supports a lot of jobs and all these things and makes things happen and just this great thing which is people making music people get a lot of a lot out of it in their lives and it's great for kids it's great for adults great for brain development it's great for social connection so we're all we're very committed to this and we're very committed to encouraging more music making um in all its forms you know our members sell like violins and they sell print music but they also sell guitar, electric guitars and you know all kinds of like pro audio and dj equipment and all, everything right so it, it doesn't matter to us what people make <laughs> what kind of music they make necessarily we're not promoting artists or getting number one hits we're just we want people to play music anywhere and everywhere you know that's our, that's our one of our sort of core um, values and and goals is to get more people making music. So that's really how we um, found ourselves involved in this. And also we're involved in lots of other similar organizations around the world. And one of the big ones is NAM, which people may have heard of, like it, the, they, they run the NAM show, which is the biggest trade show of its kind um, in the US. And um, 
they're the global sort of association for our industry and they're very involved in this as well so we work with them and others in brazil and in the uk and in germany and all these other countries around the world in china and they're involved in this too so that's sort of how our organization fits into the picture um it, but fundamentally it's because our industry and our members and all the people involved really care about people making music, which is, you know, for me, that's really nice because I'm a musician and like that's my background as a music maker. And I've always been involved in teaching and playing professionally and doing lots of things, uh, musical, lots of different things. And, you know, like it comes naturally to just talk about music making and promoting it and it's great for people. It's so fun. Um, you know, it's, uh, it brings people together those things it is um it's so nice to hear the you know it's it's obvious when you say it but it's not something we consider that often that the driving force behind an industry such as the one that you're kind of representing and involved with is just for people to make music because i was i've been listening to a podcast which looks at the tech industry and the bad sides of it and they were talking about you know how a lot of our social media and google and stuff like a lot of theirs is just to drive trick you into looking at advertisements and things like that. That's what drives their business. But for these industries, of course, it is literally just to to have people making music is for that industry to be healthy and successful. So it's very much a common good that is being um, represented and, and advocated for there. Um, I'm interested with, with Make Music Day 2024, what kind of reaction have you got? And if you've been involved in previous years, how do you see this one kind of shaping up um, as we are approaching the date? Yeah, it's, it's really varied every year. Like there's different, um, different groups getting involved. Some people will year in, year out, organize something in the area, in the local community. Some people, you know, they did it previously and then they might have stopped and come back. Some people are trying things for the first time. A lot of people really love it. Like we, we sort of survey people, we talk to people about it, and the people that are involved really love it because it's, um, I guess it's such a simple idea. And um, a lot of people, you know, inherently understand like, let's get together and play music. This is great. And let's, and especially if they're putting something on in their community, maybe a free event in the street or in a, in a venue or whatever. Um, people people do love it so yeah we get a lot of good reactions from people i mean it's it's really varied and it's i don't think um i see a few sort of common themes through some of the types of events but really it's a real mixed bag and there's a lot it's a really wide range of things that happen and and also to, to be honest like it's a it's initially a um it's about spontaneity and a lot of the things happen we don't even know about like there's heaps of stuff happening out there on the day People know about it, they celebrate it, they'll, make, they'll do something and they don't necessarily, you know, tell us. Like we would like to register events and tell us so we can spread the word. But there's a lot of stuff going on that people just do it and it's spontaneous and fun and that's great. And we, we love that. Yeah, I love how that is harnessed within this day and within, uh, the, you know, the Make Music Day campaign because it's not just, you know, you don't want to control anything or you don't want to try and, you know, as you said before, you're not, organizing anything you're literally just trying to promote something as best as possible so if you do go on the website and you do want to upload your gig it's probably the best way for the organization to promote your gig but as you were just saying then alex if you just want to spontaneously put something together this friday you're more than welcome yep and you know we use the word gig but like it, it, it really is a wide range and some people are just doing a little live stream from home on, on Facebook, some people are doing, you know, they're playing in the street, they're busking. Some people are, you know, getting together with some friends at the beach and strong ukuleles. And there are concerts and there are, you know, things that are organized with a stage and all these things, but it is a, it is a full range of um, activities and it's all part of it. You know, all of those things are music making. Yeah, for sure. And Alex, if I can ask you a question, kind of a little bit out of left field here, just because we have someone, uh, who has worked in the industry for so long and is involved in a, in a unique kind of way compared to who we normally speak to. Last week on our music news, we spoke about um, Sound New South Wales doing this kind of first of its kind for New South Wales report and we were kind of unpacking the industry where it's at. Be interested in your perspective on both the, the live scene specifically because you are so involved with that, but as someone who's played in bands and also now works in other like, areas of the industry, what's your take on, on where we're at um, nationally or or state-based as well? 
Yeah, okay, good. That's a great question. And um, I think there's a lot of ways to go with this. Um, so first of all, like I haven't read that report, but I know that I know I'm aware of and there's a lot of other data out there and reports and things that people have studied that say things have declined, things are really difficult. And there's a lot of anecdotal stuff um, like people see the closure of festivals or venues and it it creates a bit of a sense that there's a lot of problems. And I think there are a lot of problems. Um, there are a lot of challenges for venues and artists. Like it's not easy, <laughs> like it is not easy to run a, a festival or a live music venue or anything, anything that requires people to buy tickets. Like that is not easy at the moment. Um, so, you know, I think that side of it is really valid. And I think there's a lot, a lot of stuff to talk about there. I don't personally have, um, you know, the stats, I guess the way I see it is more from a player's perspective because, um, because I play, I do gigs and, you know, like, we just keep on at it. We just keep going and we keep doing things. And I mean, like in my, the band I play in a lot, we, we do a tour most years if we can, and we still do that. And we still go out there and, you know, it's hard and we, we just keep doing it and finding places to play. And sometimes the place you played last year doesn't exist anymore. It closed, you know, I read, actually read today about a place is a place in Brisbane that we played last year. It's a great venue it's in Brisbane. Um, it's still a secret. And I, when we played there, I was like, this is a real gem. This is a real, like, great room, great vibe, great crowd. And then suddenly you hear, oh, trying to crowdfund to actually survive, <laughs> you know? So it's pretty brutal sometimes. Um, but I'm a, I'm a, I guess I'm optimistic and there are lots of great things happening. And a lot of us just care so much. We don't really want to um, give up. So we just keep, whether it's artists, status managers, venue owners, um, promoters, wh whoever it is, you know, we don't really want to give up. I think we just want to keep at it and um, yeah, just have to chip away at this thing we love. Yeah. I don't know. You guys probably hear um, a, a lot of other perspectives. How does that, how does my reaction sit with <laughs> others? Yeah. I, I like it. I think it's, I mean, it's, I think it's very representative of, yeah, artists are going to continue to make art regardless of the hurdles that are put in front of them. Um, so we speak to artists and just talk about the art a lot, but we'll zoom out for our users sometimes and examine the industry and talk about that side of things. So I think it's, it's nice to hear and it's almost reassuring to know that like, look, no matter what happens, um, the artists are still going to make art because they don't make art, you know, for, for nothing. It's, it comes from somewhere that is inherent in them and that's not going to be stopped by regulation or venues or whatever. They're going to find a way, which I really like. But I just uh, thought it was interesting given that you work with the Australian Music Association now and, and you're engaging with these, these companies so often to – to see what that feels like. And then as a musician as well, um, and the band I take it you're referencing is the vampires that you play with, uh, play with just to give yep. that band a plug. Um, but it is really interesting to hear that from a musician's perspective that, yeah, you're just going to keep on kicking at it. And I think that's reassuring and nice. And um, if, if everyone else kind of came to the party with that a bit more, that'd be good too. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a quick thing though. Um, there was a study um that creative australia which is like i guess the equivalent of what you're talking about for the for the federal government the the agency um they did a, a published a study that looked at um professional musicians and artists and they found something really interesting which is that in the last few years the number of professional musicians or proportion of professional musicians in the workforce has sort of almost halved it's, i forget the exact stat but it's like it's quite a big drop just after pandemic years, right? So, um, I mean, that's the, and it's much, much less than in the 80s. So the, the graph, I can't do it, um, we're on an audio podcast, but like, just imagine a line going sort of down steeply after the 80s, then sort of like stable kind of through the 90s, 2000s, and then like another big drop, the biggest drop um, just after COVID. So to me, that, that rings true a bit because I know people who have actually gone, this is too hard. I'm not going to do this anymore. <laughs> I'm not going to make this my career anymore. I'm going to go and do some other work. I'm going to retrain. I'm going to do some other job. And I think that's a like, 
we haven't really seen that fully play out because some of them are going to come back. Some of them um, do other things for a while. It's hard to know with stats really what's real and what's just um, things are hard to measure. So I don't know, but I think there's some, there might be something in that. And meanwhile, so while, while the number of people who are playing professionally seems to have dropped quite a lot, the number of people who play music hasn't. So there's a different study that the same same organisation publishes, and they do it every five years or so. And you know the number of people in Australia who play music is it's always about fifteen to maybe nineteen percent of the population, um, and it doesn't hasn't didn't drop after COVID. In fact, it went up. We think um, during the pandemic, like more people started playing. And the, I, I look at the musical instrument import stats and the sales and all that. And that they went up like there was a huge spike in the pandemic years in guitars, um, I think keyboards, certain certain products like they went up a lot. Um, people wanted to play music, you know, so it is a real mixed bag. Like it's kind of um, looking at the number of people who play professionally and going, oh, this is too hard. I can't do this anymore. You know, there's, there's a problem there. But also a lot of people are going, I want to play music. I'm going to just do it. Um, yeah, so it's a there's a lot to unpack, <laughs> I think. Yeah, it, it definitely, and you know, because as throughout the pandemic and into now, it is very unstable. I think to to be a professional musician and to work within the industry as well, because you just don't really know. Um, you know, you could be working for a festival which gets cancelled, as you mentioned. You could be a musician who has to cancel a gig because the ticket sales aren't there, which we know that they are sort of lagging behind in a lot of areas and those ticket sales are very crucial to, to being able to pay your vendors and the venues and everyone involved uh, in that. But you mentioned that more people are actually playing music because I think, you know, I'd love to see a graph that you mentioned before for bread making pre and post COVID. I dare <laughs> say pre COVID, the amount of people who are into bread making was quite low. And then during the uh -huh. pandemic, there's a big spike. <laughs> yeah. And then it's really dropped off again now that we've got back into some form of normalcy. But that, that graph that you were referencing, what happened in the 80s to, to, to cause that big drop? Forgive me if it's a little bit of an ignorant question, but yeah. what, what happened that caused it? I think there were, well, like, um, I wasn't, I was a little kid that back then, so I don't, I can't tell the stories about the good old days, but I think my, my sense is that there was a very different culture back then. There was a lot of work. Um, there was a lot of work in, you know, venues would have bands multiple nights a week that would now either not exist or they'd have one night a week, you know? So I think there was just a lot more work that back then. I mean, it, 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 it sort of rings true to me that there would be a drop maybe from the eighties to the nineties in professional musicians um, because of those things, you know, like the pub circuit and a lot of things changed in the nineties. Pokies were introduced um, in the nineties. Pokies. Yeah. 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 Like that was a, that's a real thing. Uh, that's a real effect on our industry that did change things. So, you know, there's a lot there. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I was just going to say on that point, I think I'd love to map the, um, the bread making, um, against electric guitar imports, or something, you know, <laughs> they probably rose in unison because that because it went up and then it went down again. You know, like it actually, you know, like I look at the charts for that, and um, it's interesting. Like it, 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 um, it goes up and down and up and down. It's hard to measure because it's always changing. But um, yeah, maybe we should do a comparison of bread making and electric guitars. <laughs> And I mean, I guess if we can bring it full circle as well, back to make music day, I mean, it's exactly for that reason why these things are so important to spur on genuine grassroots music making to uh, create that event where the person in the crowd go, hey, maybe I want to pick up a guitar or maybe I want to play the drums or, or anything or just creating opportunities for bands to be seen and to be heard. So, um, yeah, if, if we can round it all the way back to, to what started this interview, um, Make Music Day is coming up. It is this Friday. And if you needed any more inspiration to go and do it, then listen to that and think about what we just spoke about and go get us bread making graph equivalent with uh, music work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And get involved and just, I mean, you, you never know what seed is going to be planted in a musical event that inspires someone, motivates someone, lead, makes a connection that leads to something. You, you, you'd never know. And it, all these things 
Um, you know, they often lead to other things and you might have a little concert in the street, you might be playing in the street or, um, or whatever, and a kid sees you playing and they come home and go, I want to play, you know, or I've already played and now it makes sense now. You, you never know. So I think it's really important um, that we get out there and play and make music together. And yeah, this is just a day to, to highlight it and celebrate it and, and do it. And I think coming from a musician in yourself as well, it probably has a bit more weight to it as well because it's not just, you know, a politician wearing a Matilda scarf but who's never kicked a ball and has no interest in funding the sport. You are actually very engaged and, you know, what actually happens to the industry um, has an impact on your life, both as a musician and also working for Australian Music Associations. If, you know, if something... You know, the industry had to shut down, you would be in a lot of trouble on two well, fronts because, yeah. it, you know, you're, you're nine to five and then also you're five to nine or whatever your, your gigging hours are of an evening. It, it runs pretty deep. I mean, my whole life is in one way or another music oriented. Like my friends are musicians. I play professionally. I teach kids to play music. My kids play music. You know, my, my friends go and do all these things. My work is in music. It's it, it runs deep, and I think a lot of people are like that. They have, you know, not necessarily all parts of their life, but some people just go and do their um, nine to five job. And the thing that really keeps them going, that motivates them, is they get to play once or twice a week with their friends. And you know, um, we shouldn't underestimate that. Like it, it's so important to so many people. Um, People who are playing professionally and people who are not and kids that just show up to their school and play with their friends. Like it's really, really important to people, you know. I um I, I got married just over a month ago and obviously that was a, a massive highlight in my life. But you mentioned playing with mates and I can sort of flash back to, you know, year nine and ten in high school and sitting around playing guitar and jamming out with mates is it, it's such an awesome fun time in your life. So it you know, just being out and even, you know, a few years ago my brother in law picked up the guitar and started learning and we're on a family holiday and there were three or four of us sort of just jamming around and playing music as well. It it is such a, a joyful experience if you get to do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's great. And it brings people together. And, you know, it, it, I think music brings people together in a way that a lot of other activities don't. Um, like, I'll, I'll give you, I don't know how long we have got time. <laughs> I'm talking a lot, but I've got, got a little thing that I often tell people which, about music. That I think some people don't um, necessarily see this and um, it is a bit hard to explain, but I do wedding gigs some, and function gigs sometimes, right? So I'll, I'll go and show up at a gig and literally not have met some of the people like never met them before don't know their name um, we're thrown together on this gig we're all fill someone's filling in for someone else you get together with a group of people you know at five o'clock you start playing at six and someone you might know but maybe there's three people there you've never met and then you finish the gig at 10 or 11 p.m and you're friends like and we've barely spoken in the set break have a quick chat here and there but we haven't like spent years hanging out together and becoming buddies but we've made this bond by playing music together, just by having to figure out, figure things out as we go and, um, you know, react to each other, interact, um, having to do this thing that we're all passionate about together, having to do, it, having to do a good job of it. And, you know, we'll finish the night and we'll, you know, we'll be getting along really well. Like it's, it's something happens. It's something about the way we have to interact. And basically, you know, one of the special things that I really love about music making is just the human interaction. You know, it's a very special kind of human interaction. Um, and that's maybe because I play improvised music, I play jazz and other things like that. But, you know, it is it is different to a lot of other ways of interacting with people. Yeah, and, and it's just a great advertisement for for music generally, that, that comment there from you, Alex. It's fantastic. Uh, and, and once again, you know, if that hasn't inspired you to, to go get involved with Make Music Day or go attend a gig anywhere, anytime, then uh, I don't know what will. Uh, but, 
Yeah, that's that's really fantastic. And Alex, thank you so much for coming on and sharing both your, your own personal perspective, which I think is so important. I'm glad we did get into that. Um, and, and also what Make Music Day is all about and the Australian Music Association is all about too. And once again, your band is, is The Vampires. So you have the floor now if you want to give yourself and your band a bit of a plug. If people want to catch you live, uh-huh. um, go, go forth. Okay. Well, you can catch us. Well, the next thing we're doing is in Germany. <laughs> so, <laughs> after China, but no, we're doing we're doing an Aussie tour later in the year. So right now we're in prep mode and quiet mode. But um, we're going to be doing some stuff later in the year around Australia um, and around Germany and a bit of Austria. So yeah, we're we're going to be busy second half of the year. It's going to be good. Epic. Well, you can find the vampires uh, on all good social media platforms, I imagine. And Alex Masso, thank you so much for coming on to Homebrewed, chatting to us about Make Music Day, um, as again, your own personal journey and the Australian Music Association. Once again, that date, June 21st, this Friday, is Make Music Day yep. for 2024. Get around it. Go down to gigs, create some, attend some. And if you can't do it, then do it down the track. Just support music in this wonderful country. Alex, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thanks. It was great. Good to chat. This episode of Homebrewed was produced by my good friend, Eamon Snow. It was recorded at Sonora Studios in Tagra on Dark and Jung Country. For more from us, head to www.homebrewed.au. And until next time, bye.